I've been talking to many of you about, you know, here are the things I like to explain. I don't want to talk a lot about me. Uh, I think there are more interesting topics. But I just wanted to say, you know, you're here and probably, you know, you all think that, you know, math is fascinating and in full of beauty. And also it's useful, it helps us understand the world, you know, that's really, really fantastic. Now, some of you already saw, if you see what I'm asking, keep silence. What is this? I mean, some of you already have been talking, maybe this table wi with whom I didn't discuss my toys. Hmm? Mobius. Mobius strip. Why do you think it's a Mobius strip? It has one side. Do you think it has one side? No. You have to be <laughs> 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 not a Nobel Prize winner to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a very good answer. Uh, what's your name? Astrid. Astrid. Still Astrid. Yeah, we asked her 10 minutes ago and she was Astrid. <laughs> so this is not a Mavius band. How do I know that? There's many ways of seeing that. You know, there's two sides. There's two colors. And they are not colliding. There's two twists. Here there are the twists. There's two boundaries. You know, you see this one is orange and the other is green. But it looks like a Mebius band. The first impression of most people, even mathematicians, they say this is a Mebius band. Here is, just pass it around and look at it. If I make an honest, I have another one that you can Look around. Now, and I'm very happy you answered. Now, this is, I wanted to mention this. Here is, a, if I try to do that, this is an honest, a real Möbius band, not cheating one. But the two colors clash, you see? So you can look at it. Now, I wanted to start with that because, yeah, it's a very natural mistake to say it's a Möbius band, and mistakes are good. Sometimes, especially in competitive environments, we are always scares of make mistakes, scares of look bad. And then if we don't talk and we don't think, it's very hard to progress. And especially it's harder for some people, women, you know, people who are less standard in math, it's even harder to make mistakes. So I want to encourage everybody to make mistakes by thinking and risking and arguing and present your ideas and then learn from it. And we all have to also, you know, of course learn and take the mistakes of others you know, as they are, a process of learning. Math is about understanding, you know, it's not about performing, and it's a collaborative process. So, you know, neurosciences now that, you know, mathematics, our, we are constantly making connections in our brain. You know, we are, you know, by thinking, you make your neurons connect in different ways and create new paths. So, if we keep them in that in mind, we can always, you know, we, and I say we, all of us, I mean, you are here and you're probably called what is called good at math or a math person, they say in the States. I don't like those words. I think persons are math persons. And especially all of you who already saw the beauty of math and you saw how to understand it, help others, be the ambassadors of math and show, you know, and we can show at different levels, we can all learn math. So I want to encourage all of you to do that and I have a uh, so I want to discuss related to this is like, you know, if you look around, you know, we, were, we just learned that, you know, in any cell large, you know, there are patterns. So if I look at here, what are the patterns in the human beings I see here? Well, they're mostly male. And we have to change that because math, as I said, is human. It's, you know, it's a beautiful thing that you, we can all access to. So we have to work on that. I cannot go in 10 minutes into all the reasons that make you know, male people and mostly white people to be, you know, doing good in math, but, you know, we know that babies do math. Babies start, you know, they start to perceive numbers quite early. And then, at some point, people, some people get scared of math. And, you know, that fear grows, and then they get teachers who are not prepared or who are also scared, and we, you know, we all have to work on break that by cycle. How am I doing with time? Four minutes. So let me, I, I just talk to you, but maybe I'll show you one thing uh, that I like. So one of the things I do in math, I study low dimensional topology and I like math with pictures, but also I'm studying math history, the, 
the life of a fantastic geometer whose name is Alicia Bull Stott. Bull like George Bull, some of you might have heard about the Boolean algebras. That was his father who died when she was four years old. She was born in 1860, long time ago when, you know, even less women were doing math and less people, you know, were have access to education. She had very little access to education, but what she studied is four-dimensional geometry. And a way to think of four-dimensional geometry, I'll just to say in my last four minutes, is the following. So here, <coughs> what we know, we all know what a cube is. Here I have a cube. I'm going to try to explain what is a cube to a two-dimensional being. So imagine you are two-dimensional, all of you, and you live in a two-dimensional <coughs> planet. So I can put this in your planet, your flat planet, this shape that you see here. And it has the edges, they are marked in colors, and I'm going to tell you, well, you can't see a cube. But imagine that you can glue the edges that they have the same color. So for instance, I'm gluing this edge with this edge, <coughs> and so on. Imagine that you can do all of that. So we, you know, we start folding, and you do it. Of course, the idea of folding, if you're two-dimensional, is totally foreign. What do you mean folding? You know, you see your two dimensions. There's nothing else. And of course, you can say, well, maybe I'll do something like this, and I'm trying to, no. You have to glue them without distorting, because what I'm trying to do is a cube, which is a, you know, one of the things that, you know, we like in math is symmetry. This, this shape has a property that if I move it in many ways and you go to a room, you wouldn't know I moved it. And he has all these many, many ways of doing that. So now, let's go back. Now you are again magic three-dimensional, and I'm going to make not a cube. Uh, I didn't bring it. I forgot it at home. But a shape made of, you know, you know what a tetrahedron is. It's a, it's a shape that has the, it's a pyramid with a triangular basis and it's all made of equilateral triangles. So now, look what I have here. This is a shape made of equilateral triangles and the size, the faces are colored. So what I'm going to do is, uh, what I would like to do is glue <coughs> the faces that they have the same color. Of course, I can't fold. We need one more dimension for that. And you know, even in these fantastic buildings, we only have three dimensions. But if we had one more dimension, you know, like we, uh, like we are telling our two-dimensional friend, then we will be able to, to glue it, and then we will be a close shape, something that would enclose. So in the sense that this two-dimensional thing, after the gluing, encloses, you know, we can see inside, we have this three-dimensional, you know, space inside the cube. In the same way, this in here will be, will enclose a, four, a piece of four-dimensional space when I manage to fold it. Really hard to see in the same way that when you were two-dimensional, you couldn't see it with this. So Alicia Bull, you know, really, she got fascinated with that somebody and I go back to, we went to this Hol Holmborns, I'm saying correctly, ceremony of this fantastic teacher of Abel, who, Abel, who, you know, opened the door of math and then, you know, Abel just jump and pff, made this fantastic splash. But, you know, somebody opened a little bit of door of math for Alicia Bull and she just jumped again and really developed a lot of ideas. And then there was a lot of, you know, nice lucky coincidence in her life that allowed her to keep working. She published papers and, uh, I mean, in, in, you know, technical math journals. And this is one of the figures that I think we have to, you know, recover and learn about. So, enjoy math. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>